quick uh, uh, slogan is talking about they will focus on hundreds of uh, scenario or context and then focus on another maybe 10,000 of uh, merchants so that they can have uh, uh, more than uh, uh, millions uh, uh, of clients. So this is uh, how they try to focus on specific context. And then how they uh, try to achieve is through the uh, API and also uh, HTML5 um, um, uh, micro apps, which is uh, in, in, in Chinese is called uh, Xiu Tingzhui. Uh, so uh, they are trying to penetrate the embedded banking uh, through different kind of contexts. And then uh, this year, they will try to focus on maybe 10 contexts and then maybe uh, 100 of uh, merchants to help them. So this is how uh, the, the strategy of the China, uh, the, uh, the China, uh, China Construction Bank Asia trying to focus in Hong Kong, uh, focus on the contextual banking. So. Um, Hopefully, I can do a quick uh, English recap here for the uh, actual slide and and also the recordings. Uh, we we will share offline uh, so that uh, you can uh, see the the translation etc. Et uh, later. So uh, due to some of the restrictions, so they they are not able to do the uh, Q and A at this moment. So if you have any question, feel free to reach us uh, reach them out uh, offline through the contacts. Okay, so we here come to our next section. We will uh, back to our English check sections. So um, the next one. So uh, we will have uh, uh, we are ha having a metalist uh, uh, API strategy from uh, at uh, Software AG. So he will be uh, sharing about the um, topics talking about the financial service, the uh, the threats and opportunity in BAS, the banking as a service. Hello, sir. Nice to meet you. Hi, Patrick. Nice to meet you as well. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we con uh, we con we have some conversation offline, and this is the the time that we 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 face each other. So thanks. So um, uh, your slide is now on screen. It should be uh quite clean and clear. So I will let you. I will pass the time to you. So thanks. Thank you, Patrick. Hello, everyone, to the session on the big rebundling in financial services. My name is Matthias, and I join here as an API strategist from Software AG. And uh, when I was researching this topic, uh, the big rebundling in financial services, I was talking to a lot of different people about their experience with financial services and with banking in general. And uh, out of all of these conversations, I had one conversation really stuck out, and that was the conversation I had with David. I've got to tell you a little bit about it. There he is. That's David. And David um, was very enthusiastic about his bank you know he said things like they really understand me and he said things like um, they know what is important to me and to be honest that's something that you don't hear very often that people say about their bank so it was very intrigued about what is it and in order to understand that i had to understand patrick a little bit better so patrick is very interested in protecting the climate protecting the environment and in sustainability. And then I sat down with him and I said, hey, what is it about this bank that really intrigues you or that really makes you so enthusiastic? And he showed me their app. So they have a really beautifully designed um, app. And in this app, he showed me, for example, that whenever he makes a payment, they automatically protect some rainforest, some endangered forest, um, and, and they um, put some money into a specific found fund. And that's really important to him. And besides that, they also have all the other things that you expect from a bank, you know, credit card and savings accounts and checkings accounts, everything uh, really very nice and digital. So I thought I have never, you know, uh, seen anything about this bank and I was digging a little bit deeper. And what I found out is that this offer that David loves so much is not actually a bank, it's a fintech. And this fintech um, doesn't have a bank banking license. They just create a very nice, beautiful app that is specific for this environmentally interested target group. And in the back end, all their core banking services are actually provided by a different bank. And the customer, David here in this example, doesn't really get in contact with that bank. The other bank is completely in the background. So what we have here is actually a bundle, a bundle consisting of two things, consisting of a digital experience of the app and consisting of the back end, so to say, the banking service, which is provided by a different player. 
So let's look at this concept of a bundle or this concept of bundling a little bit more and in more detail. So the concept of uh, bundling is actually quite simple. Bundling means that you assemble a package from several pieces. In a business context, you assemble a bundle or the package out of several smaller products or services, right? And uh, to visualize this, you have, for example, um, Lego blocks. And those Lego blocks are your pieces, your small bundles or products like a digital experience and a banking service in the back end that you put together, you bundle them, and out of it, you get your Lego figure that you then give to the customer, right? This is your big offer um, that, that you bring to the customer and that you bring to the market. Now, when you say bundling, you also have to look at the inverse, basically at the unbundling. When you start with a very complex product and you take that very complex product apart into its constituent parts and you basically take the Lego blocks back to your, to your Lego box that you can then um, start to play with and do new things with. And that's what we then call rebundling. Rebundling means um, you take those Lego blocks and you combine them in a new way. You recombine them and you create something that hasn't been there before. And there are actually two ways of doing that. It's just assembling the same building blocks as you had before in a different way, right? So, so before we had the green Lego block on top, now we have it in the bottom. That's one part of rebundling. And the other part is that you add new Lego blocks to your Lego box, right? So you have more parts to combine and to create new experiences with. Okay, so that's rebundling. Um, and as you can see here, bundling, unbundling, rebundling, that's actually a cyclical process that we go through. And the interesting thing about this concept, concept of bundling and unbundling is that you can apply it in a business context, as we did here with David's very nice bank or banking um, experience that he is so, so fond of. So it's a business concept, but you can equally apply that to IT and technology. There you also have bundling and unbundling. And when you think about technology, then you think about the small pieces being APIs, which are bundled together, integrated and orchestrated, of course, to create a digital product, a digital experience like this FinTech app from David that we have seen. And of course, you can also unbundle things. So when you have a big monolith, for example, then you can take this big monolith apart and um, create APIs or microservices for, um, for this monolith. Now, how does this all apply to banking? Well, let's look at the role of bundling and unbundling and also rebundling in banking. And therefore, we look at the evolution of banking on a timeline. And on this timeline, I have just you know, uh, taken a couple of snapshots, so to say, on this timeline. We have three snapshots, zero, one, and two, where zero goes looking in the past. What have we done in the past? Looking at the present, what's going on right now. And number two is then uh, looking into the future. How does banking evolve in the future? Whereas when we look into the future, we of course want to get informed with what has happened in the past. So let's jump right in and uh, look at the past, um, how bundling and unbundling kind of formed and informed the past of banking as we know it. So in banking as we know it, um, banks are very focused on efficiency and on serving the mass market. So what they did in respect to bundling and so forth, they took a number of financial products that were separate, uh, for example, a current account, a credit account, trading account, mortgage, retirement account, savings account. They took all of these separate offers and bundled them together as a financial service bundle, which is then a mass market banking offer. Right? And um, there it is uniform and uh, you can cross sell very easily. So when someone has a uh, current account at the bank, it's very likely that they will also get the mortgage at exactly that same bank. So that's the beauty on the efficiency of the mass market banking offer. 
next step is open banking. This is the present. That's what we're experiencing right now. Open banking popping up everywhere. Uh, and what happens in open banking with respect to bundling and unbundling is, of course, that we start with this mass market banking offer, which is now kind of the best practice uh, in, in banks. And we unbundle this mass market offer. And also not only on the business side, but also on the technology side, where we have then APIs for all of these constituent products inside. So we have APIs for credit cards, for current accounts, savings account, retirement account, trading accounts, and mortgages. Right? And now we have this set of APIs to play with. It's smaller, right? Smaller, um, smaller services. Um, and this is kind of the outcome of open banking. And open banking, when you look at it on a world map, is happening all over the place. It might have started in the UK or in the EU uh, with, with CMA and, and PSD2, but it's basically a topic throughout the world. And on this world map, the green colored kind of countries are discussing open banking in one way or the other. There's a light green form uh, where it's regulation driven and the dark green form where it's more market driven and the banks themselves um, drive that topic forward. So you can really see it's a global phenomenon. And of course, also in Hong Kong, where we have this conference here, uh, there open banking as a topic, as you have heard already um, in the previous talk. So I'm not gonna go into detail on this. Uh, um, where right now we do the unbundling basically in phases three and four with account information and making payments and tr transfers available as well. Right, so we're now in the process of unbundling um, financial services with open banking. Now, when we want to look and understand what's coming next after open banking, it helps to look at the timeline of what has happened in the past and what is very likely to happen also in the future where we have banking as a service. So um, we go back to our timeline with the three stages and we first had a bundling, then we have the unbundling. And we know that this bundling and unbundling is actually a cyclical process. So when you put such a cyclical process on a kind of on a, on a timeline, you get this sine wave form. And then the last step um, here with banking as a service is of course focused in on the rebundling where we take those little parts that we have and we combine them, recombine them. Okay, so banking as a service starts with those APIs, the set of APIs that we have in the financial services industry. But of course, um, we can rebundle things, not only by looking at all the pieces we have, but also adding new pieces to the, to the game to make it more interesting, right? So we can look at APIs of other industries. We can look at the APIs from logistics, from insurance, from accounting, from business management, from communications or transportation. Right? And all these APIs are now in our um, box that we can start building from we can start rebundling. And what we get then is not a pure financial services play like in the big, um, like in the first bundling that we did in the stage zero, we only had those black parts from the financial services industry, but now we're having a mix of other industries, their APIs, their customers, their influences together with financial services. And there is a selection of financial services in those products. So those banking products look a lot different than the banking products we are used to, those mass market banking products we're used to. And of course, there are so many ways of recombining those things, right? Of recombining financial services industry and other industries. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of ways of rebundling them. And um, all of these are very specialized banking offers. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. Uh, we've seen David uh, in the beginning, who's, which is one example of such a specialized banking offer for people who have the sustainability mindset. But there are other people who need to be served with banking products that are very specialized to their needs. So here's Kefi. And Kefi is very much into yoga. And her dream is to build a yoga studio and run the yoga studio herself but she doesn't have the necessary business background. She doesn't know about banking, about accounting, but she can profit from one of these new offers 
that are now possible by recombining financial services with accounting, with business management. And she gets an app or an application um, that helps her uh, do all the things that she was not very comfortable doing with in the first place. And that's only possible because financial services is now tightly integrated into those products. And here we have another example. This is Mike. Mike is traveling a lot for work. He's a very business, uh, very busy professional, and uh, he's a frequent flyer. So he doesn't have a lot of time, but he wants to stay on top of his finances. So when he's in the plane, he checks his, his uh, bank accounts uh, and what's going on there. But he has uh, several banks, so he needs to switch between apps. His airline that he flies with um, is offering now a product for multi-banking where he can make the maximum use of this short period of time that he has to look at, uh, at his finances. And he can look in one app at all of his banks um, and get an overview of his finances very quickly that way. Good, so we have seen three different people, three different banking customers who can profit very much from those rebundled, very customer-centric offers that are for them and for their needs, very meaningful and very personalized. Right? So that, that's new, they, they, they are, um, they are very. They feel very much connected to those offers that are given to them because they fix exactly the need that they have. Maybe others don't. Good. Um, so we've seen it's customer centric. This rebundling that's happening. But we can also ask the question: Hey, how many um, rebundling opportunities are there actually? Right. Sounds like there are a lot. And yes, there are a lot. And in order to, to think about this and look at this, um, I've uh, prepared a graph here. And on the x-axis, you see the number of possible rebundlings, the number of offers. And on the y-axis, you see the number of users, so the popularity of these offers. We have those black um, offers here. This represents the mass market banking offers. Right? They are not very many but they are used very much by, um, by, by the general population. And then you have a whole number of these rebundlings, right? So there's a lot of rebundlings, a lot of very specialized banking offers. Um, and this distribution that we see here, where we have a few highly used and many not so highly used, but a high number of them, um, this distribution is called the long tail distribution, uh, where the head of the long tail distribution is the mass market and the rest, the long tail, so to say, that's niche markets, very specialized markets. Um, and the thing is, why banks have focused on the mass market is, of course, because mass markets are very efficient. The bank builds one app and it can serve a large part of the market with it. So it's the Pareto principle. With 20% of the products, it's just those products in the, in the, the, in the first two columns, you can reach 80% of the market. Right? So that's why all the effort goes to the mass market products. And the question is now, uh, what do we do with the niches? Are those niches very profitable? Customers seem to like it, but are they profitable for banks? Now, if a bank would go and say, here is one specific niche that I want to cover, that's probably not profitable because the number of users that this niche has is not big enough to justify the investment that the bank builds the digital product and so all of it itself. So what can you do to address those niches in a profitable manner? The idea is of course to get to cover as a bank a whole range of these niches, not only single niches, but really go very broad in all of these niches. And I mean, you all knew, know technology, so you know what to do. Um, you would work together with developers, with partners. So a bank would work with partners. For each of these niches, there are already software products. They don't embed financial services yet, but they can in the future. So you have those set of partners already out there who can um, integrate financial services. So make them your partners as a bank. 
and what the bank built is not really the complicated digital product underneath, but the bank builds its APIs. The APIs that we've seen that can then be integrated by all of these different developers and partners via a portal and a certain partner program. And that way, banks can efficiently also work with the long tail. And when you work with a lot of these long tail offers, you can get a significant part of the market. So how does the value chain look like in this new banking as a service world? And I want to contrast this with the current value chain for the mass market. So let's start with the value chain for the mass market. Um, the bank nowadays has, or for the mass, when the bank addresses the mass market, the bank has the end user data at the bank um, and ex it exposes this data via its own banking app to the end user value flows from the bank to the end user and the bank can then monetize that value uh, in terms of fees and so forth now the next step is of course looking at the long tail how would the value chain look like for the long tail starting again as a bank but the bank has a new role the bank is now the api provider it still has the end user data at the bank but it is also an api provider so it exposes apis and those APIs are given not directly to the end user as before, but they are given to fintechs or API consumers that are then themselves building new specialized banking apps. And those banking apps are then given to the end user. So the value chain is a little bit longer. Um, uh, value flows again from the bank to the fintech and then to the end user. And monetization goes the other way around where the end user pays the, um, the, the, the fintech and the fintech pays that the bank. So rebundling changes also the competition, right? Um, whereas before, before the rebundling, when we were only addressing the mass market, all the banks kind of um, were going the same ways. They are from the same industry. They're from financial services. They know each other. All the banks know who the competitions are. Uh, they all have pretty much the same business model. They address the same mass market. So um, it's, all, um, it's all pretty much all of the same <laughs> before rebundling. When you now look at what happens after rebundling, you get a lot more colorful competition, so to say, because you don't only have the banks, but you also have those players that address the long tail market. It's a new competition. We call them lane changers and lane changers because they're coming from another industry and they're not going straight and only staying in their industry, but they're moving into the financial services industry by making financial services a part of their um, core offering. So yes, this new competition comes from other industries, uh, whereas the banks uh, are, are always from the same industry when they are addressing the mass market. Uh, those new players, those lane changers, they're unexpected whereas the mass market, they know each other. Uh, the, long, the, the new competition creates uh, in the long tail those personalized experiences, whereas the other banks are creating mass market offers. Other banks have all the same business model and the new competition has new business models. So it becomes a lot more interesting um, and it's, it's gonna get a lot more competition out there in the financial services and banking market. Now, this um, talk has been a little bit uh, on the conceptual side, and uh, we've looked at a couple of um, ideas about the future and how it can play out. If you're interested in learning how to put all of this in practice and learn about the technology for rebundling and for creating these specialized, personalized um, banking products, then I recommend a workshop for you. It's happening at 3.30 today um, by my friend Jeffrey. And uh, there he will look at more hands-on how we can implement um, rebundling, how we can integrate, and how we can orchestrate those services. So thank you very much. Handing back over to Patrick. Maybe we have okay, time for some questions. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have some time for the question. So thanks, Matanas. And uh, uh, yeah, we heard quite some idea from you about the mass market long tail, and it is exactly uh, what the uh, local community is observing, especially on, after the open API framework discussion. So we can see quite some different smaller uh, third party payer try to collect with bank, and banks want to work with them. But uh, there's some challenge talk about culture, experience, etc. So okay, so back to the the, the your your share. Uh, I just wonder, so there's quite a lot of different opportunity and then you mentioned that um, the leech, uh, one leech is not enough. So we need to cover a, 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 a wide range of uh, leeches. So do you have, uh, have some quick uh, thoughts or experience sharing how maybe traditional or established bank, they have already got some uh, 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 quite uh, legacy or well-established infrastructure and teams, how can they embrace these kinds of um, opportunity? So so this is the, 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 the for the established bank, while in the other hand, we we also have some small medium bank in Hong Kong. They are serving maybe a bit leech of those uh, kinds. How may they uh, try to embrace? Maybe they have uh, relatively um, uh, restricted resources. So, so do you have some quick thought uh, for these two potential uh, audience? Yeah. Yes, definitely. So um, what banks can always do is they can leverage their um, existing customer base and um, they can, of course, create those APIs in a very efficient manner. Uh, they may be starting creating those APIs um, for their internal purposes, when they are creating their own app, when they are creating their own digital channels. So as part of that, in a very resource efficient manner, they're gonna create some APIs. And later on down the line, they can start opening up those APIs and they can um, productize those APIs. So maybe it's not enough to just have an account API where you can um, read your transactions out of the account. That's what you need for a banking uh, for 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 a banking app. But you then need to add or productize um, that API as well, so that you can open the bank account via an API as well. So there is this next step in um, where you move from open banking, where you just expose the data to productizing it in banking as a service for opening up an account and um, making that a full experience, making it a real product that fintechs can use. So there are certainly uh, several steps involved in that. And you can move basically um, at different paces uh, th through that development. Okay, got that. So it, it may be part of your what you mentioned about the rebundle process. So there's a, a different step that they need to go through. So maybe internally they need to have some internal champion to 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 figure out the the the, the how to how to rebundle internally and then step by step lead to roll out to specific partner and then open it up. Is this something like like that? Is this some some uh, standard um maybe recommendation that you will share to our audience? Yeah. Um. So. When banks um, need to open up, um, uh, it's of course uh, good to uh, think about. Um, so the first step is is uh, the open banking regulation, and then the next step yeah. is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. is um, building those products. And there, of mm. course, it's uh, a good idea to work together with such potential users of the banking as a service products and mm. having them very closely involved. Uh, into your design process and um, get their feedback and input on what they actually need in order to rebundle basically and build interesting mm. bundles. Um, so uh, having that feedback loop where customers, banking as a product customers are closely involved is of course uh, is of course uh, necessary. Mm, okay, I got that. Okay, that. So, uh, for for the audience, you want to know better, maybe how exactly the hands-on experience, just uh, what uh, in the uh, uh, content is also sharing. So we will have another workshop actually in three thirty. So maybe you you are interested to join that to work with uh, the team of Soft AG and then see how it works. Maybe uh, try to ask some deeper question because uh, there will be some expert there as well. Okay, so I think that that's uh, the question from the audience and also from 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 here. So uh, thanks for a lot for your time and then thanks for your support in the event as well so thank you thank you very so much you okay thank you okay so uh